Here we are, Yamaha Drum Factory. Uh, I can't believe we're here. <laughs> over a larger surface area, making a stronger drum shell. He's got a timer so he knows how long to run the machine as this actually gets into the grains of the wood. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really a detailed process going on here. All right, so now that we have this beautiful drum shell, we have this gorgeous bearing edge on here, everything is finished beautifully, we have to drill some holes in it. I know, I like it just the way it is, but I understand we gotta have hardware. Yeah, we gotta put some hardware on it to make it sound and look beautiful as well. So, uh, a very simple process, but important at the same time. We're gonna throw this on a drill press, basically, and as you can see, it has various drill bits, uh, depending on what hardware needs to be applied to the drum. And we have different sizes of drills, obviously, based on the size of the drum as well. But a simple process, we just do this, and again, the important part is just to make sure everything's lined up correctly. So, another important process to show here. Now that we've got all our holes drilled, we have our beautiful finish on this shell. We go through one final process with the bearing edge, and he's going to take care of it for us here. What we're going to do is a light hand sand. It's a very fine uh, sandpaper that he's using, and he's just going to kind of get in there and do a light sanding. What this is going to do is this is going to give us a nice clean edge for that head to kind of move on. This is going to make it very easy for that head to stretch over that bearing edge. If it's a little bit rough, if we didn't do this final sanding from yeah. the router, it would be too rough and we might have some tears in the heads as we start to tighten down that head. Then what he's going to do is he's going to apply, after we blow it off, we're going to put a little bit of lacquer on the top of that just to okay. seal that bearing edge off. And again, what's that? It's just going to keep all the moisture and humidity out of that shell so we don't have any problems as the drum goes through different weather changes and so forth. So he's just kind of sealing that bearing edge, so to speak. Yeah. Checks it again, make sure there's a little inspection and then we're ready to go back onto the onto the conveyor and we're gonna put some hardware on. Hardware and what do they call them? Badges oh, or the emblems? badges, yeah. emblems. I call them yeah. uh, logos, man. Not it's logos. Let's go. do it. Make sure everybody knows it's a Yamaha right. product. We have to make sure that. All right, so let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right. Well, next we gotta get the badge on this. So uh, let's take a look at it. It's uh, well, that's an MS9214. So let's let's take a look. Well, what kind of badges do we have here? Um, so we, we got a whole series of, of badges uh, over here. I I gotta pull. Not, I know this isn't what we want, but I've gotta pull oh, this out. A little, little homage to Steve, Steve Gadd. Gadd. Yeah. I mean, how cool is that to be standing here touching the Steve Gadd emblem before it's even been printed, go. given a serial number, all, all time favorite. I, I did notice that I don't see the Brett Kuhn badges. Is there? Where's? When's that snare drum coming out? Yeah, you know we're working on that, Brett. So. <laughs> let's let's, well, let's go with what we need for yeah. now. We'll talk let's about try, that later. We'll talk about the development of that. So, All right. Um, you can see it's a blank badge. You got our, you know, got your Yamaha on there, and there's a blank. Uh, there's room for a model and a serial code on there. So uh, we're going to give this to the worker, and he's going to he's going to scan that barcode there on the machine. Let's give him some room here puts the badge of the machine and then he's going to scan that barcode okay. and tells him what serial number or what model it is. And obviously this keeps everything in sync and organized completely. Right. They know what drum has been shipped out then as well. We have right. tracking records and right. so forth like that. Yeah, that's neat. The way it just prints that right out. Now this is one of my favorite processes here. You have to make sure that that badge sticks to the shell. So right. you can't just have a flat badge on a round shell, right? right? So he's got a special machine over here. Okay. Well, let's take a look right at this there. machine. And you can see That's now it. he's got a nice curved badge, so that'll yep. stick right on the shell there. Beautiful. Okay, now we have a nice shape to the badge. We have our model number and our serial number. Now we're ready to throw this on the drum and make sure that our customer knows exactly what they're getting. And I, I think we're going to leave this up to you, Brad. Yeah, right. Can you do that? Well, I'm, right, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to give it to the, to the oh, professional the master? here. That's oh, okay. right. Check it out. Let's come on over there. So obviously that. We're lining up that hole there for yep. the template to make yep. sure that goes in the same Lines place up with every the, time. the top of the edge and the, the air yeah. hole. Presses that on and uh, there you go. Now it's officially a Yamaha. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. And then are we going to put on the sticker as well? Now? Yeah, we have. This is where we put the sticker on as well. So we have that label that goes down yeah. the front of it. And uh, you maybe notice the uh, the logo. You, you know what the uh, the little. Yeah. I was, you know, I was just going to ask you about explaining to everybody about the uh, the logo for Yamaha, the tuning forks. Yeah, the tuning forks have been with Yamaha since its inception or its beginning. Um, the three tuning forks stand for the three elements of music, melody, harmony, and rhythm. 
So it actually has a meaning for us as well. Excellent. And as Yamaha started as a music company, it's been a very important element to our company throughout its history. Nice. Oh, I, I did there, not know that. There you go. Thank you. So now you it looks like a Yamaha. It, it's labeled as such, and we need to get some hardware on this thing That's so right. we can play it, all right? Add so. a little, uh, little hardware, and we're going to be good to go. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Okay, so now we're going to put this hardware together. We call this the cage of the SFC or the MTS snare drum. When he assembles the cage, he kind of gets all the uh, tubes or rods, you know, tightened up on this. And then we're going to take the shell and we're going to drop that in there. Okay. Yeah, the air gun sure makes things a little faster, doesn't it? <laughs> that lays in pretty smooth, doesn't it? Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next step. As you can see, we're putting an SFZ snare drum together again. So uh, one of the neat uh, properties of the, the SFZ snare drum is the uh, power post. We call them power posts, but I, I call them Frankenbolts because they, you know Frankenstein when yeah. you had those bolts yeah, on his neck? Yeah. Nice, <laughs> so nice. So the Frankenbolt or the power post, which is unique to Yamaha. Okay. Uh, when we first developed the SFZ MTS snare drum, we found that without these power posts attached to the shell, there were certain overtones that were singing too much. The drum was hmm. resonating too much. Now, that's due to the fact that the, head, the top head's actually on a metal right. bearing right. A, edge. A, a metal ring. So okay. that support, basically, that you have for the top flam head or, or white yes. max, black right. max that you right. use, basically being on a suspension uh, system, basically what we do is that transfer of sound going through the tubes. If it's too much or if the shell resonated too much, as we found, we wanted a more articulate sound, okay. especially with all the notes everybody's playing these days. Right. So, you know, we have to have an articulate, precise sound. Right. So, uh, this helps kind of uh, focus the sound of the drum and the overtones, and, and makes a great quality of sound that you have with Yamaha. See, I, I I didn't realize how much it had to do with sound. You know, you just when you look at a drum, you think, well, that's yeah. that's part of the structure of it, the way it was constructed for right. strength, rather than <laughs> sound properties. Right. Well, well one, one of the things that we also have that's nice about this too is this always helps us line up that bottom head and the tension rods when you're changing heads. Yeah. Of course, you know you can be in a rush to do that sometimes if you, right. if you break a head or something like that. You, so it helps with that as well. But the main purpose of it was actually designed for sound. Just as many of the elements of the drum it was, um, what we've done is we've taken a drum, we've tried to make it as sound as good as we can, and then we work on making it as durable or as reliable yeah. as we can. You know, right. there's other features, but sound is always the first priority. Yeah. So I love that. That's been the theme today, absolutely. <laughs> Everything's about how does it sound. Yeah, you have quality workers working on this. Uh, and and let's tell yeah. everybody, I mean, yeah. she's been Th doing this for how long? 34 years. 34 years. 34 years. So, so if you've bought cool. a Yamaha drum, you've probably <laughs> had something made here. And uh, she's probably assembled it for you, so. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, now that we've got everything almost put together here, we're, we're nearing the end, Brett. This yeah, is getting exciting. Getting so she's gonna tighten down the hardware that we have on the drums, make sure that everything's nice and snug. Again, a lot of this, it's just craft work at work. You know, yeah. they, they were able to take this and timing and a feel thing, just to make sure everything's nice and tight. All right, let's put some heads on this. Hopefully it'll start to look like a snare drum pretty soon, huh? We're, we're getting there. Uh, Chuck Tomat, thank you this time. Whoa, hey, that's I'm Japanese. Wow, that's good. <laughs> well, I just, I wanted to ask a couple quick questions about the suspension ring before we put the head on. So if you could just tell us a little bit about the properties involved here. Well, yeah, as you notice, uh, Yamaha uses a, a specific profile for the snare drum. It gives it the sound characteristic, and it's one of the thickest in the industry, so it's durable. Thickest, not bearing edge wise? Or? Uh, thickest in terms of the uh, kind of the thickness of the actual material okay. here. So it makes it more durable. Yeah. So when we started uh, using flam heads, uh, this has to take all the tension of a flam head. Now. Absolutely. So uh, the crown system or the uh, suspension ring system that we have, uh, it allows us to use those heads but still gives us a great sound quality of the snare drum. Yeah, I remember when those when those other heads first started getting developed, how difficult that was on the, yep. on the wood shells and how much of a difference that really makes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, this this again colors or makes a characteristic of the Yamaha sound. As you notice, this is this is very even round here, so we have a, an even sound column. That we Absolutely. Can, uh, you know, the air travels through there evenly. As yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this seam or not, but it's it's beautiful. I mean, you can't you can hardly tell there's a there's a change there between the wood and the metal. Well, Brett, because you were 
key to helping us test in 2002 the 8200 series toms and bass drums. We were developing a new lug design. I just wanted to touch on the hardware package with you right now because it was key to the 8200 series. Yeah, it was an amazing change for us, you know, with uh, changing tensions and sizes and uh, head development. You know, a drum company like yourself is always in, in evolution, basically. And uh, that year we had zero. Right. Issues, breaks, <laughs> concerns, whatever, with with that kind of hardware right. stuff. So it was fantastic. Yeah, and whenever you're testing a prototype, that's that's a good story to tell. Yes, so absolutely. With the bass drum lug casing, we were able to reduce the weight, make it 60% stronger using a straight line technology. As you can see, we use the arch here. So again, we were able to with this in conjunction with the uh, the new claw design, we were able to make the uh, the drum much stronger. But at the same time. Sound is a priority. You know, right. we have to make a drum that sounds good, but also withstands the tension of the, the newer heads, the crimped heads that we were starting to see on the drums. So, um, yeah, and then the uh, in conjunction with the 10-ply bass drum hoop, it's been a fantastic uh, a development for us. The 8200 series has done very well, and it's a great set of drums. Now, size-wise, what do we have available now for the bass drums? Well, we actually have 10 sizes of bass drums available now, so um, it fit any size ensemble. And in fact, it's nice to have a 14-inch bass drum, which is the small one. <laughs> yeah, but, little, little baby bass. But you know what's great about that is a lot of groups out there had uh, smaller snare drums they had turned into bass drums. And now we actually have something that'll match the Yamaha, you know, system of drums, you know, which is yeah. nice. You can have something that matches your ensemble. So um, another development was the tenors. Yeah, let's talk about that. First, the casing. Yeah, the casing, what's a, a real remarkable development here is we were able to make this 50% lighter than the previous version. Hear that, tenor players? <laughs> lighter. <laughs> and we were able to make it 25% stronger. So one of the keys to this was uh, using an aluminum alloy again. And really our idea for this was uh, to, to make it, again, more durable, make the drums sound good. But at the same time, when you talk about putting eight or ten of these lugs on each set or each tom, uh, it can add up. So making it lighter really helped us out. And uh, with that, we were able to cut the toms a little bit deeper and get a little more tone out of the drums and not sacrifice having a heavier set of drums. Absolutely. So, so and then the, uh, the tom hoop has been a great development for us as well. We've used this for years, but you can see that this flange is in. And what's really nice about that is it protects those bearing edges from any accidental hits from sweeps, mallets, or even sticks that are being used now, too. Yeah, and that bearing edge, like we've talked about earlier, is so important, uh, key, to getting great sound and tone production out of a drum. Yeah, we can't damage that, otherwise we're going to lose the sound that we've, we've worked so hard to complete here. So, um, another development that you had helped us with early on too is uh, the MTS snare drum. Correct. And here. with the MTS snare drum, we were able to take our SFZ, which was so popular in the sound, and we were able to add a top snare unit to it. And what this is doing is, as you know as a composer, is giving you another sound texture to use. Yeah, it's one more sound for you to write for. If you hear that sound, whatever is appropriate, like you say, smaller sticks on the edge, or if it's a, a fortissimo passage in college marching band and you want to try to hear them, you know, it's a large band. I mean, there's, there's right. different options. Right. So. Well, and a great thing about Yamaha products is the fact that we take what we learned here at the R&D at the drum core level, we're able to vertically integrate that into any product that we develop. So if you look at the Field Core Series marching drums, which are competitive marching drums, or you're looking at the Power Light Series, which is uh, our entry level or middle school parade drums, you know, they're lighter, obviously, uh, given the name Power Light. Right. But at the same time, we vertically integrated the sound design and the casing designs and everything else that make it a great set of drums, just like any Yamaha product. So. Well, just, just to watch Yamaha evolve, and continual, continually push forward and press the envelope in terms of design is, is exciting for me as an artist and a user of the product. Yeah, well, we have a lot of thanks to our artists for helping us do that, too. And we have a great design team in Japan that's helped us so much through the years in making great sounding and great looking drums. All right, it looks like a drum now, doesn't yeah. it? Ah, see We're getting in. there. See oh, look at you practicing your Japanese. Well, I'm working on it. I'm working what? on it up here. So here you can see we have the snare guts. And um, an important process as well, putting this drum together, especially with the snare drum, is having the guts on there properly. 
Now, I know you have a lot of experience with this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this to you. But let me get well, it started. Well, actually, here. before we get to my part, I was curious about the guts themselves. Ah. Uh, obviously, they're synthetic nowadays, as opposed to the way it used yeah. to be with cat gut. You know, originally, and yeah. uh, weather, man, talk about affecting something. You know, it'd get humid, they'd be hanging off, and obviously, with the development of synthetic gut, we have more consistency of sound. So, can you speak to just what the uh, you know what the guts are made of, etc. Well, when Yamaha started building drums in 1984, Mark for marching, uh, we developed this gut with our tennis racket division. Um, mm -hmm. And what's great about this is it gives us the durability of a synthetic gut, but it still gives us a sound that's desirable. And what's important, just like we were talking about tuning all the drums, if you have ten snare drums that you're uh, tuning and, and have playing at the same time. Right. Having a consistent gut sound is really important, as you know. Yeah. I mean, you've yeah, done this. Huge. So um, not having it fizzle out on you or kind of um, change with the humidity and the heat and everything we have all the time yeah. is really important. So why don't you show me, because I know you have some specific well, techniques you'd like to display. I mean, the I, biggest thing for me is, is making sure that the guts are, are, talking on, are touching on the bearing edge, the right. snare bed, as we called it earlier, when we were going through the uh, process. And so I like to turn those guts on and then kind of give it a little tap test, so to speak, and obviously we're tapping right on that snare bed and we're getting no sound, no slap yep. between the guts and the right. head, right. right? And let's come over here. Now there uh, we are getting a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so now let's have you. So that means there's some distance between there's the head space. and the bottom of the guts. Absolutely. So what you want to do is, first of all, these don't have to be very taut, you know, it doesn't have to be strung out really tight, but as long as you have a, a, a loose enough gut and the guts are actually in contact with the head. So let's yep. move this down a little bit. And while you're doing that, I'm going to keep tapping and when that gets silent, you know it's time to stop. Yeah. There we go. Beautiful. And I like to say that it's a little bit of a frown or smile on the ends, just a hair, just, just so you're pulling them, but you don't want it too far down because then you get a lot of right. slack in the middle. Right. And you see that a lot. You see young students not, not really understand that these adjustment knobs, the ones on top, are for the vertical adjustment right. of the gut, not the horizontal. And they pull them way down and then they come off the drum right. in the center. Well, in the center, the whole idea of having that beautiful snare bed is those guts contact the middle of the head where the right. main air column moves right. through the drum, and that's what really gives you that nice full snare sound. Yeah. Well, and now that we have this, one nice thing about the Yamaha guts, too, is it's easy for people to tune up and get a good sizzle, a good snare sound out of the drum. You don't have to do a ton of work, but then if you want to take that sound and augment it or make it even better for a line of 10 or 5 or 8 snare drums, depending on what you have, you can do that. What's yep. really nice about it. So, yep. Well, let's take a, let's take a look at the, uh, this is a final drum. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, uh, tuning to do, so let's let them finish this up. Yeah, and we'll go finish check it, it out in the box. We'll uh, find it out at the end uh, before it goes to shipping. All right, let's All right, check bye. it out. Let's do it. Okay, well here it is. All the hard work that all the craftspeople have put into this drum, and here's the finished good. We're gonna bag it, and we're gonna box it, and uh, it's gonna be a final inspection here as well, so we can make sure that everything's put together correctly, all the parts are good, and we'll make sure it's nice and shiny for our new customer. So. Yeah, it's a beautiful drum. It's, uh, once it's packaged up, then it goes to a central distribution warehouse, yep. or how does that work? Yeah, uh, all these drums, any drum that comes out of here could be for any of the world's productions, so it goes to a central distribution center. Uh, if it's coming to America, it's put on a container. If it's going okay. to other countries, then it's distributed there as well. So um, what's exciting is this is the end. Here we are. That's great. Yeah. Let's follow it down. Yeah. Okay, Brett, here we are. It's the final stage of packaging right here. We're going to put it in the box. And what's important to remember is, you know, if we go through all this hard work, all the craftspeople and people that have touched this drum, if it doesn't arrive safely to our customer, it's no good to them either, right? Absolutely. So we actually have designers that work on boxes all the time so that we're, we're packaging the most efficiently as we can, you know, mo most eco-friendly as we can with the boxes that we use. And at the same time, it arrives safely to our customers. So let's, uh, let's make sure this gets safely to our customer here. No wiggle room in there. No, no, nice and tight. No extra space. Not a lot of extra cardboard used. Yep. 
And obviously, like we said earlier, this can this can be going anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Which is pretty amazing to think about, right? Yeah, the next blue snare drum that you see. You might there have, you go. Might have purchased this one on the video. <laughs> might have helped build it. <laughs> Couple staples, a little tape. Nice and neat. Now, I got to tell you, somebody's got to carry this out of here. And I, I think that's going to probably have to be you. Well, you know what? I think that's the reward <laughs> of finishing this whole drum right here. And here we are. We're all boxed up and ready to ship. And if you ordered a Blue Forest Marching snare drum, this will be coming to your home soon. Dozo! Wow, Joel, what, what an amazing day. I, I can't believe the, the craftsmanship, the quality of what goes in here, the, the dedication from all the employees. Yeah, man, it's, it's such a great opportunity for you to see what goes on here and just giving musicians great tools to make music. Well, it's just, uh, there were so many parts that were so amazing to me. I, I, I mean, one of my favorites was the staining. I was yeah, just blown yeah. away with that I mean, the process artistry that goes into finishing works. drums, man, I, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's like making music. You, you got it. It's art, man. Well, Brett, what did you think of the Yamaha Drum Show Factory? That was amazing. Just the quality of craftsmanship, dedication to the employees. Yeah, beautiful throughout. Yeah. Now you know why we've had such a great relationship for over 20 years with the Madison Scouts and the Cavaliers. Well, we always appreciate all the great gear that Yamaha makes. Yeah. And when universities have to choose marching percussion, they choose Yamaha more than any other brand because of that consistent sound and the quality product. No surprise. So I guess my next question is, what are we going to do now? Well, why don't we take another look at some other stuff going on at the factory? Okay. All right.